Hi, I'm Amy Baxter, editor of Retail Leader, and welcome to Trend Talk. Every week on Trend Talk, we chat with an industry expert about ongoing retail trends and news. This week, we're catching up with a Laguna Beach jewelry brand that's in the midst of expansion. My guest is Jason Griffin Rydell, CEO of Goriana. So welcome, Jason. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. Happy to be here. Let's jump into more of the retail expansion. So you had a bunch of openings last year. So can you tell me about yep. what is um, looking forward into 2022? How many new stores you've yeah, got? Yeah, of course. Or what's you know, yeah, we ended, thir- you know, 2019 with 13 stores. And so, you know, it was exciting. It was like at the beginning of 20, we were going to open five stores. We were ready to go. And uh, two of those five stores, uh, one was Brooklyn and one was Walnut Creek. And, you know, l- two years ago this month, in fact, this coming weekend, President's Day weekend, I was in Northern Cal getting, you know, with the opening of Walnut Creek. And then we flew to New York City for the opening of Brooklyn. And then we came home and COVID happened. And it was like, whoa, okay. Mm-hmm. We had, you know, store, I guess, uh, 16, 17, 18, were like 90% built and just kind of went on freeze. Um, so obviously they did eventually getting open in the fall of 20. Um, so we finished, the, we did finish the year with the 18 stores, um, but it just happened all differently with COVID. And then, you know, last year was interesting. I mean, you know, the year began and it's like, okay, like, do we, do we feel like retail is going to recover? And we saw great signs that it was. And so we kind of put foot, you know, f- uh, full foot forward and we opened seven new stores last year. Um, actually eight, if you include the fact that we relocated one of our existing locations at Abbott Kinney, um, So with the seven new to those 18, we ended the year at 25. Um, And now this year, we've got more stores slated. We actually already opened last month. We opened store 26, which was Greenwich, Connecticut. And we just opened store 27 yesterday, which was Park City. Awesome. Um, I'm very curious, what are some of those signs that you were seeing that like now is a good time to go back into opening stores? Um, I think just all around retail, the signs are pretty strong. People are going back to stores, but what's been... On your side. Yeah. Well, you kind of have a micro macro, right? So like beyond retail, you have our category. And, you know, when we first started this business in 2005, you know, it's apartment floor. It was a two person show. It was myself and Goriana. You know, we're husband and wife. We've been married now 20 years. We were, you know, kids in our 20s. We were doing this business. It was fun. And, and when 2008 hit and the economy collapsed, it was like, oh, shoot, this thing's done, right? All these businesses are going out. And one of the things we learned back in 2008 was that, you know, jewelry is an interesting category where people tend to gravitate towards it when their things are good. They buy things and they feel good because they want to kind of celebrate feeling good. And sometimes they tend to go to it even when things are bad because it's an emotional experience and it's an emotional transaction. We carry a lot of emotional attachment to jewelry. And so even in times of stress, mm-hmm. like people tend to want to hike – even during COVID, when people were just, you know, wearing, you know, working from home and, and kind of going through the anxieties of what COVID brought and the change that COVID brought, they wanted to still interact with jewelry because it makes them feel good. Um, and, and then, you know, and, and that's in the macro. In the micro, when you apply it directly to retail, yeah, I mean, look, we all went through that model, right, of May of 2020, and no one was in stores, all the stores were shut down, we all physically, um, you know, were kind of quarantining and, you know, retail took a pause. But, you know, for us, I, we saw this big surge of people and because I think they did go through that experience, they wanted to get back to being out and about. People missed the interaction. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think that was what we've seen at the most of retail is that people have just wanted to get back out. And then there's been the whole evolution of COVID, right? I think that was like then the vaccine came and people started feeling safe, but then are feeling better and more comfortable about being out. But then we had this whole now recent wave of Omicron and even people who are vaccinated, like myself, even I'm vaccinated and I, I got, you know, COVID came through my household. But then I think there's now this new sense of like, OK, I've, have, I've been vaccinated and I've had COVID. Now I've kind of built up some super immunities. And I think that you're seeing even more so. And then some of it's just weather related as well. You know, particularly a lot of our stores are based here in California. A lot of our store, you know, all of our stores are, are very light and airy experience. We don't have fitting rooms. They're all bright and airy. They're very clean. Um, They're very uncluttered. I think it created always a kind of a safe environment for people to feel comfortable to kind of like to continue to shop. Yeah, I want to ask you more about that. What's like the the aesthetic of the jewelry? Can you kind of tell me like what's the brand feel, the experience of when someone's in your store? And when you first started opening stores, are these trends that you, you know, noticed then and have changed to like with the airiness and the the feeling of the stores? Or is it just kind of the way that the brand has always looked? 
Yeah, no, it's interesting. You know, the product has always been about being very versatile and timeless and kind of, you know, I think Gorian's vision of the product was always to design product that you could wear. And like we always say, like, you want to wear the jewelry, not let the jewelry wear you. It's not about making a big, bold statement. It's about having something that could be every day, right? That you could have a pair of earrings on and they could look nice and you could go for a walk or a hike and have them on and you could also go to dinner that night and still have the same pair of earrings on. So it's for an active person, you know, and I also think we wanted to have the product be very timeless. We, we didn't want it to be something that you bought and then, you know, a year later, like, oh gosh, that trend's over. We wanted it to be very classic and timeless because part of that oral aspect is like we were the pioneers of layering. And the only really way you can kind of say you layer the jewelry is if you can layer like a new style with an existing style that you've had. I mean, some of our top selling styles are 15 years old. So I think that that has always been kind of an ethos of the brand. And then part of that just being Laguna Beach based, Southern California based, it was just about ha kind of having that, you know, that, that lifestyle feel. The other thing that was really important to us is that we want the jewelry to have very high quality and be very elevated, but with a, with a price point that is inclusive. You know, inclusivity has always been a very important part of our brand ethos too. Like we never wanted to have something where we, people felt like, hey, they couldn't interact with it. So, um, you know, when you look at retail, when we first opened the Laguna store five, almost, you know, five years ago or five plus years ago, it was this idea that, you know, we were doing very well in Nordstrom. But, you know, you're never fully, and Nordstrom is a great partner, but even, you know, even though the best of partners, you can't completely tell your brand story because it's just not, that's not the way department stores are built. So for us, you know, it was exciting, but also a, a, a little scary of like, okay, now the pressure is on us. Like, how do we want to tell our story in Laguna? And I think for us, it started with just saying, okay, even if we have one store and that's all we have, we want people to be able to walk in and feel like they're kind of almost in our, our home. So the way that we envisioned the store, and we actually partnered with an interior designer that does homes, um, her name's Becky Owens, to help us design the feel of the store, that when you walked in, you felt like you were in just like this comfortable, kind of light, airy beach cottage that brought kind of light and airiness to it. Um, I think that's continued. I think that's been also kind of part of the luck and success of COVID is like having these spaces that are very clean and light and bright and airy. Mm -hmm. um, I think especially helped during COVID. And then there's been the evolution, right? You do have to like, I, even the store that just opened yesterday, I mean, everyone's been going, oh my God, it's the best store yet. The interior wise, we're constantly looking to improve things. So I think in a lot of ways we see ourselves as interior designers. We're not just like, okay, here's the Goriana store and this is the perfected model and now every store is going to be the same. I mean, we're constantly learning and taking things and improving things and saying, wow, like we're not allowing, we're not, we're not preventing ourselves from continuing to expand our creativity, I think, um, which is a, d a dangerous thing, right? Like you want to, both in product and in retail experience, feel that you can creatively keep like letting yourself push your, push the limits with what you do. So I think that there's this constant evolution. Like we certainly don't look at things and just go, oh, that was great. It's going to be great forever. And again, a lot of it's mm -hmm. like your home. You may go home and you may get, take a home and do a complete redesign to a house, completely from scratch to the studs, redesign everything, and then completely furnish it. It doesn't mean that it's going to be forever, right? Like there's going to be a point mm -hmm. at some point you're going to go, wow, like this tile was great, but I need to redo the bathroom tile or this couch has had its day. It needs to get re redone. So I think we look at our existing stores very much like little homes. Um, and we're constantly having conversations about, you know, how do we upkeep things and, and what needs to be improved. So. Yeah, that's very interesting. So when you're thinking about where, which markets you're going to go into with new stores, yeah. How are you thinking about those locations and what you're bringing from the Laguna Beach routes to Portland, Oregon? Yeah, that's an interesting concept, too, because, like, we're conscious of, like, a combo of we want to bring a part of Laguna to the community, but we also want to be conscious of the community we're going into, that we're not having this, like, uh, arrogance of, hey, guess what? I think, you know, Austin was the first one where it was like, whoa, you know, we don't want to just come slamming down with, like, hey, this is Laguna, and guess what? We're here because people in Texas are proud. They have a certain Texas swag about them, which is great. That's what Texas makes Texas what it is. And so I think it's just about having that balance of saying, look, yes, we want to bring a part of Laguna to a market. Uh, like we'll use Portland as an example as a new one coming up. Um, but we also want to be respectful to what the Portland and the ethos of the community of Portland are. And, you know, I think it's just trying to strike that balance between the two. Um, and even in here in California communities, I mean, you think about like some of these markets we've gone into, like 
we're not just like slamming down Laguna and Malibu and trying to make Laguna Malibu. I mean, Malibu is Malibu and Laguna is Laguna. And there's some similarities more so maybe than Laguna and Portland, but there's also some differences. So I think it's a, even in the, here in the California markets, it's being conscious of that and making sure that you're balancing like what you're bringing, but also what you're going into. And I think it's got to be an equal exchange.